great session, firstly, and I do have uh, Mr. Ruhail Amin, Senior Editor of Exchange for Media and BW, who is here to ask those pertinent questions which are coming from the audience and from us. So, Ruhail... Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Khyati, and uh, thank you, Mr. Bailey, for uh, this insightful uh, keynote. There are quick questions that I've got. The first one is, uh, uh, has COVID-19 made big tech even bigger? Has digital disruption taken on a new meaning in these pandemic times? Oh, that's uh, oh, for sure. So the short answer is yes. I think uh, definitely the pandemic has brought to life digital in a much more accelerated way across all the dimensions we spoke about. I mean, this event is a great example of how we would have done it differently, but for the pandemic, right? But if you take anything, any aspect of our lives, it has been changed very dramatically by technology. Uh, Imagine the pandemic without technology and how scary that thought sounds, right? We would just, it would be impossible to connect and learn from each other, have any dialogue, do any business. So the, uh, definitely that's uh, been very important. I think the first part of your question, which was about big tech and whether yeah. that is, so I, you know, definitely that's uh, popular news. We read about it all the time. We watch it on CNBC or any other platform, which is on business news, uh, Here's what's happening, right? So for sure, big tech has been graining in prominence and has benefited in many ways from the pandemic and the digital disruption that's taking place. But the story of tech is much, much bigger. Just to illustrate, you know, so think of a platform like Shopify, right? And that's a nearly about 160, 170 billion, 180 perhaps billion dollar company, uh, which is completely resting on this change and transformation that's taking place in disruption. Just to contextualize it, that $180 billion makes Shopify a big, or as, as big or a bigger company than IBM, right? Think of Salesforce, company which is, you know, what, a few years old, uh, $200 billion in market cap. Think of Adobe, a couple of hundred billion dollars in market cap. So you just add these and these are not like big tech right we don't take when we say big tech we're talking about uh, you know the uh, massively big tech companies uh, trillions of dollars in market cap but it is a story of technology in totality it is not just a story of uh, big tech or small tech uh, i think uh, uh, technology enables democratization of businesses where a large number of platforms have actually taken off some of them have practically speaking a vertical takeoff and Therefore, I think it's an amazing time, actually, uh, you know, to be in the tech space. And this platform, of course, is all about technology and what uh, disruptions are. And you could, I could go on. I mean, I can think of so many names which are, and by the way, we, we, I've only talked of things which are in the marketing and the, uh, the sort of commerce space. But you, you could apply that in pharma. You could apply that in uh, uh, automobiles. Everywhere, guess what is the number one uh, game in town? And that's something to do with technology. Absolutely, absolutely. There's one more question that uh, how can organizations looking uh, look at uh, to create new business capabilities with data, software, and the power of cloud ecosystem and redefine and strengthen their relationship with technology? Yeah, I think uh, that's a great question. You know, so the cloud uh, has definitely been a very uh, important transformation in the last few years, both in terms of the vast troves of data uh, that uh, is stored, but equally in terms of the enormous amount of computing power that can be put into uh, uh, processing uh, that data to great uh, effect for everybody's benefit, including businesses. Here, what, what becomes important is I spoke about earlier the idea of data being like a superpower, right? Uh, you know, so if you said what's a superpower, it has to be data. How many people are attending this event right now? Who are they? You know, what do they really like? What do they don't like? And actually sort of almost being able to take a real time, a daily view of what's going around in your business on one hand, but also having mining insights out of that into what you can call is a slightly longer term horizon. So it's not everything is about real time optimization and real time data. There are some large secular trends that we can pick up through data. Very loosely, I would call the power of data in uh, three areas. One is in the area of insights. And very simply asking ourselves the question that through the power of data, how can we make business better, right? And therefore, what tools, capabilities, systems, people do we need to do to answer this question of how do I actually make my business better? What insights do I have which are unique or profound? The second big bucket is innovation. And how can I use data, therefore, to innovate better? How can I use this computing horsepower that I spoke about, uh, the uh, vast amount of data and everything that technology has to offer? 
to innovate and to create better innovative products which serve consumers and customers better. So that's the sort of second big piece. And the third big piece is the combination of insights and innovation. How do I measure the effectiveness of what I do in business better so that I have a continuous learning loop, which on a day-to-day -day basis improves, practically speaking, the business. So whether it is customer acquisition for a B2B business or brand uh, acquisition, uh, consumers in the context of any any which dimension, you know, learning sort of loop on a daily basis, learning on a monthly basis and feeding that so that that cycle uh, of, is actually powered by tech and data. And this is pretty much actually uh, the cornerstone of a successful business is going to be using data for insights, uh, data for innovation and measuring uh, that right. data, what's coming out continuously to create this virtual sort of uh, loop. So I think uh, a lot to offer. I could go on for hours about this subject of data and what it has to offer. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Velde, for taking on these questions and for this uh, keynote. And uh, we are done with our slot. Thank you so much. And over to you, Khyati. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rohail and Mr. Velde. We really enjoyed this session. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Velde, and sharing these insights and case studies with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate uh, having me and uh, good luck with the rest of the event. Thanks.